Have you heard of George Babyface Nelson? This notorious bank robber and public enemy number one of the FBI was responsible for more FBI agent deaths than any other criminal in American history. But who was this man and how did he become so ruthless? From his troubled childhood and early criminal career to his time in the infamous John Dillinger gang, join us as we explore the brutal true story of George Babyface Nelson. Find out about the high-profile robberies, his first murder, and his daring escape from prison. Stick around until the end to discover the dramatic showdown that would ultimately lead to his demise. This is a story of a man who lived by the gun and died by the gun, and it's one you won't want to miss. Lester Joseph Gillis, also known as Babyface Nelson, was an infamous bank robber from the United States. He collaborated with John Dillinger in Crown Point, Indiana, to assist him in evading capture and being returned to freedom. The Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI, would later label Nelson as the public enemy number one. Nelson was the most dangerous criminal ever, and he was responsible for the deaths of more FBI agents than any other criminal. However, he was killed by FBI agents during the Battle of Barrington, which took place in a suburb of Chicago. These agents gave him fatal wounds and he passed away as a result. On December 6, 1908, Nelson was born in the city of Chicago, in the state of Illinois. After accidentally shooting a playmate in the jaw with a pistol he had found, he was taken into custody when he was 12 years old. He was sentenced to more than a year in the state's prison. At the age of 13, he was arrested once more for stealing a car and going on joyrides. He spent the next 18 months in a correctional facility before being released on April 11, 1924. He joined a gang when he was a teenager and rose through the ranks to become the head of the organization. He tied the knot with Helen Morziniak, and the couple went on to have two children together. Within two years, Nelson and his cohorts pulled not one but two high-profile robberies, both of which were associated with organized crime and more specifically, armed robbery. On January 6, 1930, they broke into the home of magazine executives Charles M. Richter, tied him up with adhesive tape, cut the phone lines, ransacked the house, and stole approximately $205,000 worth of jewelry. This was the first incident of its kind. Two months later, they committed a second burglary at the bungalow owned by Lottie Brenner von Bulow, where they made off with approximately $50,000 worth of jewelry. Because of these crimes, the gang became known as Tape Bandits in the local press in Chicago. On April 21, 1930, Nelson continued his career as a criminal by robbing a bank and making off with approximately $4,000 in the process. One month later, he and his cohorts committed a string of burglaries in which they stole jewelry up to $25,000 from several homes. Nelson committed a bank robbery on October 3rd and made off with $4,600. Just three nights later, he stole $18,000 worth of jewelry from the wife of the mayor of Chicago, Big Bill Thompson. She proceeded to describe the person who attacked her. He looked like a child. He was attractive, but he couldn't have been much older than a boy. George Babyface Nelson committed his first murder and robbery three nights after his gang was connected to a botched robbery attempt at a roadhouse in Summit, Illinois, on November 23, 1930. The failed robbery attempt resulted in three deaths and three injuries. During the winter of 1931, Nelson and the majority of the other members of the Tate Bandits were apprehended, and Nelson was later sentenced to life in prison at the state penitentiary in Joliet. However, he was able to get away from the prison in February 1932 while he was being transferred and he traveled to Reno with the assistance of Tui Gang and William Graham. On August 18, 1933, Nelson carried out a bank heist in Grand Haven, Michigan. That was a success and as a result, he gained confidence in his ability to lead his gang. On October 23, 1933, he enlisted the assistance of Homer Von Meter, Tommy Carroll, Eddie Green, and two additional local robbers to steal $32,000 from the First National Bank of Brainerd, Minnesota on December 9, 1933. The presence of influential gang members from the North was brought to the attention of San Antonio police by a woman who was a resident of the area. Two days later, two detectives cornered Tommy Carroll, and in response, he fired his weapon, resulting in the death of Detective H.C. Parent and the injury of Detective Al Hartman. Both detectives were officers with the Los Angeles Police Department. Everyone in the Nelson gang, except Nelson himself, fled the city of San Antonio. In the spring of the following year, Nelson and his wife traveled to the San Francisco Bay Area, where they recruited John Paul Chase and Fatso Negri to participate in a new series of bank robberies that they planned to commit. 
John Dillinger is famous for his daring jailbreak from the Crown Point, Indiana facility on March 3, 1934, where he used a wooden pistol. It is believed that members of Nelson's newly formed gang were responsible for organizing and financing the escape, even though the specifics are unknown. The month of April 1934 found Nelson, Helen Gillis, and John Paul Chase making their way to Chicago, Illinois to become members of the Dillinger Gang. Nelson and his wife took a vacation with the Dillinger Gang at the Little Bohemia Lodge in northern Wisconsin during the time that Chase was stationed in Chicago. The FBI received information on the whereabouts of the gang on April 22, 1934, and special agents were dispatched to the Little Bohemia Lodge as a result of this information. However, the gang was alerted to the plan that the FBI had dogs that were following them. As a consequence of this, the gang ran off into the night, leaving behind a small number of female accomplices, including Helen Gillis. During this time, Nelson was trying to find safety for himself and two hostages in a nearby house. J.C. Newman and W. Carter Baum, along with the local constable, arrived at the scene not long after that. Nelson, who stood only 5 feet 4 inches tall and weighed 133 pounds, dashed up to the vehicle as soon as it came to a stop and ordered the people inside to get out. He was only 5 feet 4 inches tall. Without any hesitation, Nelson opened fire on all three men, with his automatic pistol ultimately claiming the life of Special Agent Baum. During the robbery that took place in 1934 at the Merchants National Bank in South Bend, Indiana, which was carried out by notorious gangsters Babyface Nelson, John Dillinger, and Homer Von Meter, a police officer was tragically killed by a gunshot wound. Following the heist, the criminal made their way to Chicago, which is located in the state of Illinois. On July 22nd of that year, Nelson was the one who ended Dillinger's life by shooting at two police officers who were on the Wolf Road outside of Chicago. This ultimately led to Dillinger's demise. The three of them, along with Chase and Helen Gillis, eventually made their way to California, accompanied by two other people. On November 27, 1934, information was provided to Inspector Samuel P. Cowley of the Chicago Police to the FBI, stating that Nelson was seen driving a stolen car. This information was provided to locate Nelson near the town of Barrington, Illinois. Nelson and Chase opened fire with an automatic rifle on two special agents who had discovered the vehicle. Even though one of the agents returned fire, Nelson's vehicle was rendered inoperable for the time being because a bullet hit the radiator. Nelson and Chase were being pursued by Inspector Cowley and Special Agent Herman Edward Hollis, who were each in a separate vehicle. At that instant, Nelson veered off the road and came to a stop. Before the agents could even step foot outside of the vehicle, Nelson and Chase opened fire on them. Sadly, Special Agent Hollis was shot and killed during the four to five minute gun battle, and Inspector Cowley passed away as a result of his injuries the following day. Before fleeing the scene, Nelson and Chase moved their weapons and equipment from their vehicle into the agent's car. Nelson sustained life-threatening injuries and passed away later that evening around 8 o'clock. An anonymous phone call led to the discovery of Nelson's body the following day by FBI agents who were searching for a cemetery in Niles Center, Illinois. Despite his violent and criminal ways, Nelson remains a fascinating figure to this day. His daring escapes, his association with other infamous criminals like John Dillinger, and his eventual demise at the hands of FBI agents during the Battle of Barrington have all contributed to his legacy. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the brutal true story of George Babyface Nelson. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.